Hello, my dear friends. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. So glad to see you. I know it's been a hot minute since I last recorded and I know that I owe you a Kringle video on the Serene and Green 3 that I bought from Kringle, which are Butterfly, Graceful Fern, and Green Leaf, all burned um, down to the wick clips, except for one, which we will get into when I do that video. And um, I definitely owe you those candles. My um, lovely nephew, whose name is Lawrence, and Lawrence is, I know I'm gonna get this wrong, I want to say, 10 or 11 years old. I cannot remember, although I'm sure I will be corrected. Um, Lawrence uh, FaceTimed me this week and asked me, um, where's the Kringle Green video? <laughs> where's St. Patrick's Day? Because I'm waiting for it. Lawrence religiously watches this channel and watches all my candle reviews and he's been waiting for the St. Patrick's Day video. So, and he's probably tickled pink, pink that I um, am giving him a shout out now. So Lawrence, it is coming, I promise. Let's say, let's say Tuesday. Tuesday? Um, today I took a little bit of a break because I wanted to do one candle that is special because I had a birthday on Friday. Um, it's been a, a punishing week in a lot of ways, but I got to Friday and I was like, I am just taking off today. I'm completely taking off. It's my birthday, I'm gonna do what I wanna do, which for me was I went to the big city, which is Richmond, <laughs> and I did bargain shopping and it was so much fun. Um, but that day, as I was thinking about all of the candle reviews that I had to do, and I was like listing them all in my mind, I knew that this candle needed to be done, which was candle number 42 from that special drop that Bath & Body Works just recently did. Um, I've got a stack of candles that need to be reviewed. And I was, <laughs> I, yeah, on Friday, I was thinking about it and I'm like, is it 42, is it 33? Like, I can't remember um, because like the numbers are just so random and arbitrary that like I couldn't remember which one it was. And then all of a sudden I just made the connection in my mind. I turned 42 on Friday. <laughs> so 42 as a number was really, really high in my memory. Like on Friday, it was like 42, 42. I was dwelling. I'm like, now you're like basically dead. You're a senior citizen now. Like it's craziness. And then all of a sudden I made this association to the candle, which is also 42. So happy birthday to me. This is a happy birthday to me video. I'm 42 and here's number 42 and let's talk about it, yeah? All right, so this was, by the way, <laughs> 33. I, I, was gonna, I was gonna talk a little bit about it. I mean, when I hauled it, I talked about it, but it is now in the car, in the trunk, um, waiting to be returned. <laughs> when it is opportune because I am not gonna burn that 33 one. Now that one was the lemon one with the espresso um, and I just did not like it. I did not like the coffee note that was in it. I did not think that it was a beautiful coffee note or an authentic coffee note. Um, and the lemon was fine, but it wasn't great. Um, and I think a lemon note really has to be great to be indulged for me personally. Like it cannot go, there are a whole range of ways that lemon scents can go that are mostly all bad. <laughs> then there's like one that is excellent and one that is just kind of like mediocre but we'll take it because it's not completely like cleaning supplies or something. Anyway, it was kind of in that second category of like mediocre but like eh. So, and I've, there have been too many reviews. I don't, I don't know of anybody who like loves that candle. So um, that candle is going away, but 42 was great. And when I hauled it, I said that. I said, I think just objectively smelling both of them in front of me, this is a reputable candle. <laughs> this, is, this is a good candle. 33 is a no for me. So um, we don't need to go into the whole thing. They've been super coy. They gave us like the cool number system, but with every intention of doing away with the number system. So they're not actually committing to any kind of range of numbered candles, um, but they just kind of like put a number out there and then solicited all of our opinions about a very limited range of names that they had curated online and we could all vote for them. And actually, when I went into the store today, 
which is a Saturday, um, I noticed that they have big announcements now that they have taken all of our um, voting into consideration and have made a determination. And spoiler alert, they are not names that I voted for, so I am very displeased and I don't think democracy is working for me, if you know what I mean. It's just not democratic if you don't win. <laughs> I voted for, on the lemon, the 33 one, I voted for affogato because I like saying affogato. <laughs> really, that was the only reason. Um, I thought it sounded sophisticated. They went instead with the espresso and lemon peel, which is fine. It just doesn't exactly trip off the tongue, you know? Um, I actually think that if they had called it like lemon espresso, that would have been better. Maybe just two words. I think that's all we need for that. Um, but God bless, we're gonna get at some point, we're gonna get it back again, um, probably. And then number 42, I voted for vintage vinyl, and everyone I knew voted for vintage vinyl too. So, I'm very displeased that vintage vinyl, that one I'm upset about, because they're giving us instead this vintage memories. Like, it just sounds stupid. Vintage vinyl immediately sounded cool, like super cool, right? And everybody was kind of into it with the vinyl. Like, I just, I think that was a huge mistake. But again, God bless. I hope that there wasn't, like, voter fraud. I hope that Bath & Body Works really did, you know, tally the votes without corruption. Because I suspect vintage vinyl actually won. And if and when it comes back, I will probably secretly call it vintage vinyl. So... That will be my peaceful protest. So number 42, um, by the way, if I had to conjecture, and this is purely a conjecture, um, I know we were all puzzling over why we're seeing this candle in March because it really does smell very like cool weather, very, very fall, possibly even a little bit of a holiday. This could be a very nice like old Saint Nick kind of smell, something like that. Um, why are we singing it in early March? I do think it's a mistake. I think this should have dropped like at the latest early February. I think early February was about the cutoff in which we could see this kind of candle, even if it was just teasing for an earlier period. Um, if I had to conjecture what they're gonna do is I would imagine they're gonna bring both this one and that new espresso lemon one out in like the first or second wave of fall candles. So I think we will probably see both of them in like August, something like that, where like you can still do a lemon because it's still technically summer or the end of summer. Um, and then this one will be kind of like one of those segues into the, the fall season and we're gonna see both of them and it's gonna be kind of a moment and they'll be like, oh, you voted, oh, they're coming back, blah, 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 you know? And it'll be like a, not that we need any more hype for the first or second wave of fall candles or Wrath and Body Works, but if I had to guess, that's probably what they're gonna do. But even if they do do that, again, there's no reason why these candles shouldn't have dropped like late January, early February, where they would have made more sense seasonally. Um, but again, whatever. All right, <laughs> preamble over. The notes on this one are sweet cream, fresh cinnamon, and vintage leather. Give me one second. I have something in the oven and I feel like it's burning. Okay, back again. I don't know that it burned, but it definitely needed to, to be taken out. Okay, so um, sweet cream, fresh cinnamon and vintage leather. Um, so this candle, first of all, it does have a great deal of cinnamon in it. And I said that from the top. There's also a great deal of musk in it. And it does have a very wood paneled library kind of feel to it. It's really a lovely candle. It has dimension, it has some depth, it has some richness, and it does lean a bit masculine. But it is what I called in the hall a gateway masculine candle <laughs> in that it's not like full board masculine. You could even call it like 
third gen masculine. So there's like first gen masculine, which was candles that came out like, I don't know, 25 years ago. <laughs> and those are in the category of like Midsummer Night Dream from, or Midsummer Night, <laughs> Midsummer Night from Yankee Candle or Mahogany Teakwood, Bath and Body Works. Those are your first gen masculine candles and they're just completely unnuanced, heavy as heavy can be, loud, I'm a cologne kind of fragrances, yeah? And they were kind of almost novelty, novelty candles at the time because there really weren't that many men's colognes as candles at the time, if any at all. And, and honestly, home fragrance wasn't huge. I mean, Yankee Candle really made home fragrance huge. Um, but even Yankee Candles candles um, <laughs> tended to be like fruity, like they had the whole country kitchen motif, fruity, gourmandy, floral. I mean, it was just kind of like a very, like the, the fairly conservative families or um, the, the most, the most well plowed kind of home fragrance notes. Um, and it wasn't until like decades later where we started getting like really innovative home fragrance. Um, anyway, close parentheses. This is definitely a third gen. And I would say that, like I said, a kind of a gateway masculine in that it is one of those candles like coffee and whiskey from Bath and Body Works from last year, which was very successful. I found just in my travels, and this is very unscientific, but I found in my travels that most women, I found that most women loved coffee and whiskey more than the men did actually, um, even though it was considered kind of a masculine candle. So I would call that more of a gateway candle in that I think it is, if it's not conscientiously marketed toward a specific demographic demographic that usually don't like the masculine candles. Um, it is at least kind of a middle vibe between like soft and sweet and especially like vanilla kind of lovers and then the more masculine candles. And sometimes in the cozy seasons, you can kind of get away with that. And I actually do have coffee and whiskey here with me. I brought it. And man, I'm amazed at how much sandalwood there is in it. It's a ton of sandalwood. Um, yeah, really successful candle for them, especially, especially amongst the female of the species, if you know what I mean. Um, so, this one is a little bit more complicated than coffee and whiskey. Um, and it's more nuanced because it has the spice dimension to it. Um, primarily cinnamon. So it's appropriate for them to really call out that note. But I do think that it, there's probably some, which I also said when I hauled it, it's, it's, it's a spice that you would associate with a soft incense or like if you're even older and can remember a specific time period, a snuff box, like it has a very like tobacco, like um, at least a, a tobacco reminiscent kind of vibe to it. And so in that sense, I think there probably is some clove and might even be some anise in it. Um, but I would say that cinnamon is definitely the most forward spice. And it's a beautiful cinnamon. It's neither a red hot candy cinnamon, nor is it like an uber gourmandy kind of like cinnamon roll cinnamon or holiday cinnamon. It's much more of a like, like a very dry baking spice kind of cinnamon. I mean, it's just, it's, it's really lovely. I think the most pleasing of all cinnamons, frankly. Um, there's a dryness to the candle as well. And there is a great deal of creaminess, but it's not, I mean, this says sweet cream. I don't, I don't know that, 
I'm grateful to know that there is sweet cream in it because there is that creamy dimension is definitely cutting a little bit of the harshness or the potential harshness of a leather, of a patchouli, of a vetiver, of something like that. Yeah, that musky, that deep, dark, masculine muskiness with the spices on top of it that can go also a little bit on the biting side, a little aggressive. And so the creamy dimension is marrying them all and just giving it like this warmth and this coziness and a very like palatable, sweet kind of dimension, which is what makes it, I think, a gateway masculine as opposed to just a hard masculine. So I don't know that I'm smelling the sweet cream, but the sweet cream is definitely adding a very welcome dimension to the candle. Yeah, especially for those who don't necessarily love these things on a regular basis. When I hold it, I also said that the quote unquote leather note that I'm smelling here could very well be leather, but it could also be vetiver. It could also, it could also be patchouli, but I don't think it's a very forward patchouli if it's a, if it's a patchouli. So think like spiced pumpkin and patchouli. That's like a true patchouli note. Yeah, this is not pronounced enough to actually be patchouli. There's amber in it. So between the amber and what is probably vetiver, and the reason that I say that is there have been a lot of vetiver candles or a lot of candles with vetiver in them from Bath & Body Works recently. Vetiver is one of those notes, especially when you have kind of a smoky, incense -y kind of spice vibe. It's one of those notes that could come across as leather and that really marries itself super well with like those herbal or spicy elements, yeah? And can add a little bit of sweetness and depth at the same time. Um, and also, when they gave us that list of all of the and they gave us the list of all the names, like one of them was like vetiver, right? Like like sweet, sweet vanilla and vetiver or something. And vetiver isn't listed on the bottom, but I think that was kind of a tell. It was definitely a giveaway that I think this is probably a vetiver note rather than a leather note, but it could be both. Very similar, musky. Yeah. It's beautiful. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful candle too and that I think it's very marketable. I just really do. Yes, there will be people who just can't stand it. And there have been a couple who have written reviews on Bath & Body Works website saying they hate it. <laughs> that will happen. Um, but at the same time, especially if they have like bad associations of like, especially very like masculine smells, perhaps in their formative years, their childhood, you know that kind of thing. Not all vintage memories are great, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, but I think it's going to be very well liked. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than coffee and whiskey. So I think that this is one step further, even though I still call it a gateway, I think it's one step further into that kind of masculine realm. But I, I, I think that the folks who liked coffee and whiskey will probably like this one, provided that it comes out in the right season. I just don't think anybody was really springing for this in March, except for the people like me who just like love it regardless of season. Yeah, like this is my kind of candle and so I don't care when it is that it comes out, I will buy it. Um, for, for people who are much more seasonal and for whom this may be a little bit of an acquired taste, they're definitely not gonna spring for it in March. So the proof will be in the pudding. Let's see how it sells in August or whenever it is that they bring it back to us with the ridiculous name, Vintage Memories. Um, burn, so here is, <laughs> it did burn down to the wick clips um, and I let it do that, but there were moments where I did not think it was gonna get there. I, As you can see, it was not a pretty burn. It was not a pretty burn on any level. Um, it did not develop puny wicks, it did not. There were some times where it burned a little bit lower than usual, but for the most part, like it burned fine in terms of the volume of the wicks, but the wax, oh my gosh. I can't, I can't even remember a Bath & Body Works candle that is as dirty as this one is. I actually took a picture of pretty late down in the candle. So here's a picture of it burning. 
like <laughs> look at that wax it's like black oh my gosh did it affect the fragrance I mean it smells great right now but it does kind of have a little bit of a smoky vibe and I don't know how much of that smoke is intentional and I don't know how much of it is like soot in that sense, it's a very forgiving fragrance. And many of your fall candles and holiday candles are. They're not fragile fragrances. So they can really put up, they can stand up to some degree of discoloration, carbon residue, sooting, etc. And it's a good thing because this was not a pretty burn. It really was not. Um, strength and throw. Um, so it was a little shyer than I wanted it to be in the open concept. It didn't do particularly well. I think I had it at about a five or a 5.5, something like that. It did much better back in the master bedroom. In the master bedroom, I found that while it started out very like modest, it was buildable. So you would go back after a couple hours and it contained space and it really was very good. And the cinnamon note helps a great deal. That cinnamon note is forward. It's in the higher range. It's there to play. It's there to be seen and to express itself, etc. So I, I thought it did definitely have presence, but I would be careful about where it is that you put this. In the enclosed space, after a couple of hours, I was definitely getting it up to more like a seven, which is, I think, where it should be. Um, could I stand it to be a little bit louder? Yeah, maybe. But I do think with the musk, with the spices, with the leather or vetiver, and then with the cinnamon on top of it, seven might be what people want from it and no more, yeah? It's not quite as like linear as coffee and whiskey. Coffee and whiskey is a much, it's not firing on quite as many levels. It's not as spicy. Now, that being said, it did remind me a great deal of coffee and whiskey in the way that it performed. Because the first time I burned coffee and whiskey, I thought almost exactly the same thing. I burned it once or twice and I'm like, what is this? I'm really not getting much strength and throw. Like this is a blah, this is whatever. And then my respect for it seemed to grow as I continued burning it. And I don't know if that's because I gave it more of a chance or if it really did get stronger as it went along. And there was one particular moment with coffee and whiskey where I blew the candle out, I went out for the evening, came back in, opened the door and was hit with like coffee and whiskey. And it had been like extinguished for hours. And the like hang that it had, I mean, this, this candle had serious lasting power long past the point that it was burned. And that was the turning point for me. I started really respecting the candle at that point because I was like, you know, it, it may not be like a nine when I burn it, but it has presence and it stays. Like it, it kind of like gets under your skin. This one was very similar. This one had lasting power as well. So after I had burned it out, the house still smelled like it for hours afterwards. Maybe not quite as much as coffee and whiskey, but it was significant. Whereas most of the florals that I've been burning, once I extinguish them, like they're virtually gone by the end of the hour, you know? Um, I don't smell it in a continuous way. And honestly, that's not like a litmus test for me in terms of candles. Sometimes you really don't want your candle to last longer than when you extinguish it. It's certainly not something that like people look for, but it is kind of, it, it just gives you a little bit more respect for a candle when it like stays put, you know? Like after you burn it out, it's like, no, I'm really here. I don't know, it's like the way that some people have this quiet influence with you, you know? Like people are like that, you know? And you don't even sense their influence. And then all of a sudden, some incident happens and you realize this person actually is very powerful to me, you know? Like that's kind of how this candle feels. And it's how coffee and whiskey did too. So I think they're in the same genre. Um, and frankly, I will look forward to seeing this in the fall. Does it blow my mind? Um, is it a best new candle? I don't know. I don't know. Um, but is it a very good candle, a great one for their catalog and one that we really wouldn't mind seeing in the fall or again? Yes. Yes. This is beautiful. Yeah. And it's, it's different. 
it's different, you know? It's not like pumpkin pecan waffles again. We will see pumpkin pecan waffles in the fall. We will see leaves in the fall. There's like all of these different ones that Bath and Body Works does really well and that are well within their like wheelhouse. It's great to get some of these though that are just kind of like a little bit more complex, a little bit like more intriguing, but still well within that genre of fall or cozy weather, etc. So there you go, 42. I liked it. I would have liked to have seen a cleaner burn, like this was nasty AF, but it didn't seem to affect the scent very much and it didn't develop puny wicks. So there you go. And the chances of it coming back cleaner in the fall are slim. All right, so I actually bought a couple, I hope to like, I, yesterday on Friday on my birthday, like I really wanted to buy all these candles and then like, I just couldn't find any that I liked. But I did go to Yankee Candle because I, I'm not like a really cool VIP person. I haven't spent enough money with them. But I did get a little tiny baby candle for free because it was my birthday at Yankee Candle. So look what I got. Can you see it? It's not focusing, is it? Is that focusing? It's because it's kind of pastel-y. I don't know, I'm sorry, it's just not focusing. It is Canyon Pine Trail, and this was that fifth one in the Desert Sun collection that I, I burned through all of those, and this was the one that I didn't smell because it came out late, and it was an exclusive to the store. And Connor from Connor Connor's Loves Candles, he got it, and he really liked it. And I thought, hmm, let me at least, I wanted to smell it, you know, and I, I liked it so much that I was like, sure, make this my free candle. I really like it. It has a strong Christmas tree vibe. I mean, it's, it's a good pine balsam kind of smell. And there's something, ooh, a little bit citrusy and frankly, a little botanical, possibly a little floral. It's sweet. I really like it um, and I don't have, there aren't notes listed so I will have to get notes when I do burn it and it's so small so it'll probably be one of my like bedtime bathroom candles. Um, but yeah, I was really happy and I, I'd like to see how this one performs. I like it. It doesn't like, it's not, it's not completely like original or innovative like vanilla horchata was, you know, but it's actually really nice. And it's hitting the spot for me right now. Sometimes those rugged tree scents, it's just, ah, uh, it's kind of a palette cleanser from all of the candles that are like floral and tropical. And yes, it's kind of out of season, but it feels great. It feels great. And it doesn't have like spices in it or anything that would immediately say holiday. So I'm really excited to try that one out. I was talking to the girl, um, the girl who was the um, sales associate at Yankee Candle, her name was Jasmine. And she was so knowledgeable and so kind. And like, she just knew all this stuff. It was a joy to talk to her. Anyway, we talked about this collection and I was like, Cause she was like, well, what, which one was your favorite of the, of all of them? And I was like, cause she liked this one too. Um, I said, you know, <laughs> I'm the only one in the world who probably likes that vanilla horchata candle. And she was like, oh, she didn't want to say anything because I knew she probably didn't like it. <laughs> she was just like, oh, you know, I said, but that said, that said, it was a messy candle. It wasn't executed the right way, etc." You know, I said, but. I do think objectively, aloe and agave was probably the best candle in that collection, like full stop. And she just kind of smiled and she was like, yeah, it absolutely was. She said, um, and the store has completely invested in that scent after the fact. She's like, like, did you see aloe and agave burning at the front door? I'm like, yes, I did. <laughs> she said, we've got it here, we've got it here, we've got it here. <laughs> she said, we have, 10 times more like quantity of aloe and agave than we do any of the other ones. So Yankee Candle knows full well that was the candle of that particular collection. 
And I think now in hindsight, I'm willing to give it a best new candle 2024 for Yankee Candle. I think it was probably just good enough for that and very successful. But I'm really interested in um, Canyon Pine too, so I'm gonna give that. Then there was, there was a Dillard's at this mall. Dillard's is a big like, um, it's a big box store, kind of like Macy's or Nordstrom's or like Lord and Taylor Bloomingdale's, right? I thought it was always, I always thought it was a Western, West Coast thing. Um, cause I didn't grow up with the Dillard's. Um, but maybe cause, um, I mean, it was Richmond, so I don't know. But anyway, um, at Dillard's they had, um, arom I think it's called Aromatic but it could also be aromatic. I'm not really sure because I've never actually heard it pronounced, which is kind of like a luxury-ish candle company. Macy sells them on their website, I think. I haven't been terribly impressed. Anyway, um, Dillard's had like a whole range of aromatic candles. They had Lafco candles and they had Capri Blue candles. Um, a lot of Capri Blue candles, like some of the more obscure ones too, which was kind of nice because they actually have other candles other than Volcano, if you can believe it. Um, and actually a couple that are quite successful. Anyway, um, oh, they had Illum, some of the Illum candles anyway. Anyway, I really liked this one and they didn't have it in candle form, they only had it in wax melts. But this one is called The Smell of Spring and it's so beautiful. And it's like so like, it's really concentrated. I'm getting a ton of lilac in this. But I think I'm also getting maybe a little bit of hydrangea <laughs> and maybe even another white floral like jasmine. Oh, it's so beautiful. And there's something almost green, but also very dewy. Like I can almost smell the pollen <laughs> when I was smelling it. I'm like, do I have my EpiPen? <laughs> this is legit. <laughs> So I'm really excited to try this out. I haven't tried any of Aromatics candles. Um, I got this from Bath & Body Works. So the Bath & Body Works at Richmond had First Sight. And I don't know why it is not, um, I don't know why this is not focusing. Probably one of the settings on my camera is like, messed up and I have to fix it at some point. Anyway, if you can't tell, this is First Sight and this is the flanker, well it's not the flanker, see, Feridian slip already. There are two like wedding candles that are coming out and the one that's gotten all of the buzz is dressed in white or woman in white or something like that, whatever that white candle is with the but the pretty botanical, yeah? Um, that one's getting all of the hype, but this one is coming out at the same time. So you should be seeing this on like Monday if it's not already in your store. I checked the one in Charlottesville today and they didn't have it on the floor. They only had it in wallflowers. So this is first sight, which they are marketing as a masculine. So it's kind of like a masculine feminine like thing, like the dressed in white is like the bride. And then this is like for the groom or whatever. And then this one comes in all of the masculine body care. So it comes as a cologne, it comes as a spray, it comes as, you know, all of that stuff. Um, it's textured, it's not like a fantastic package. It's not, it's not like stunning the way that that white candle is, you know, um, but maybe that's the way that like heterosexual weddings are, you know what I mean? <laughs> Where it's like, it's the bride's day. And then like the groom is like, whatever. He's just kind of there like as a hanger on of some kind. <laughs> Maybe that's changing. And I do think in same sex, like weddings, it's a different vibe. It's like more equality, I think. But <laughs> this is definitely a very like hetero straight vibe that Bath and Body Works is going for, where it's like the blue masculine, like that whole like half of their wedding like marketing strategy is just like completely absent. I haven't heard anybody talk about this candle. It's all but about that other one. And I want to tell you, having smelled the two of them, this is the one that I brought home. I don't like that woman in white one or whatever it is. Like, I, I don't, it's fine, but like, 
And maybe in a year in which Bath and Body Works was doing less floral because they're just doing so much floral right now and they're really doing it fairly successfully with the exception of Strength and Throw, which has not been good. The performance on these candles really since the first of the year has not been good. But that aside, notwithstanding performance, the range of botanical candles that they've given us it's really impressive. Connor from Connor's Love Candles, one of his videos this weekend, he was like, honestly, is this like the best year Bath & Body Works has had for floral in a really long time? And I completely agree with you. So I wonder if that woman in white candle came out in a different year where there wasn't this huge floral push, if it would like be a little bit more impressive. I mean, we just got like tropidelic and then the the best blooms just came out. And then like, I just think it's too much. It's too many candles that are like, just, they're just good florals, but they're not spectacular florals. Although I did think Tropidelic was something special because it had a very tropical, like banana-like kind of feel to it. But these other ones are just kind of like iterations of each other with like different nuances. So the white candle is fine. I mean, it's like, it's a white floral. I'm detecting a little bit of like citrus in it too. I think it might be lemon. It could be another citrus, but I think it's lemon. It's got kind of a little bit of a zestiness on top. There's a warmth, there's a perfuminess. Like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's fine. For me, it's a little sweet and for me, it's a little generic. And I'm not a girly girl, so like, as, as stunning as the packaging is on a certain level, like it's just, I, it's just not something I would purchase. It's not something I would purchase full stop. It's definitely not something I would purchase if I wanted something really, really special and unique, i.e. on my wedding day, yeah? Um, this, however, is a different matter. Oh my gosh. Now, I'm just gonna tell you what the caveats are right away. The caveats are that this is just too weak. It's too weak of a scent. And I've already burned it once. And I can tell you that here in the open concept, it was giving me like a four. Now I will try it back in the um, master bedroom. I'm not close to anywhere near like doing a review on it. Um, so I will try it back there and I think it will do better back there. There's no question. Um, but I, I think the volume on this one needs to be turned up so much more. Like it needs to be coming in at a six or a seven. And believe me, you would want it to come in at a six and a seven because this is stunning and it's not a masculine fragrance at all. This is a feminine fragrance and if I'm not mistaken, I think it's a version of Baccarat Rouge. So for those of you who know Baccarat Rouge, that like crazy ubiquitous like perfume, it's like the Stanley Cups, right? Like not the hockey thing, but like the, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like this is that ubiquitous perfume that we've smelled on, <laughs> oh my gosh, especially if you're on a college campus, it's like, all the girls pass you and it's a cloud of Baccarat Rouge. Also, a cloud possibly of cloud because Ariana, Ariana Grande duped Baccarat Rouge as the perfume cloud, which you can get at Ulta and various other retailers. Cloud is a bit sweeter than Baccarat Rouge, a little less complex, a little bit more girly even than Baccarat Rouge. And if that's the case, then I would say that this is the more, the less sweet and more masculine version of Baccarat Rouge. Yes, there is a lot of musk on the bottom. I mean, I would say that this is, um, it's Baccarat Rouge that's grounded, really grounded. Less high notes, much more bassy notes. And it does also smell a little bit like In the Stars, which I really like from Bath & Body Works. So if In the Stars and Baccarat Rouge had a love child, it would be this. I mean, does that sound like a groom? I, I don't know that there are that many men that are gonna wanna smell like this. And I know that's probably like stereotypical, but again, I think it's just statistical. I just don't think, there are gonna be some men who will, but I, I, I don't think Baccarat Rouge is considered a very unisexual fragrance. And I just think, 
this is just too feminine, I think, for most men. I tried on the cologne when I was in the store and I just kept smelling it the whole day. I was like, and actually because of all the smells in the store and even afterwards, I didn't even make the association with Baccarat Rouge until this morning when I opened the candle again and I was like, whoa, <laughs> in isolation, in the vacuum, in the fragrance vacuum of my house in the early morning hours, this is Baccarat Rouge. Or at least it has a very strong Baccarat Rouge vibe to it. So if it's anywhere near as popular as Baccarat Rouge the perfume, this one is actually quite special. Yeah? I mean, it just is. Even if there was no Baccarat Rouge to be duped, it's a much more interesting fragrance than that like woman in white, whatever. Like I said, it's just weak. It's just weak. Um, look for a review from this soon, shortly, and then last but not least, when I walked out of my house today, I got this package um, in the mail, and I was like, what is this? I didn't order anything. My parents sent me Yankee Candle Blueberry, because they know that it's like my OG, OG Yankee Candle. Ah, Blueberry. Talk about vintage memories. I mean, you can see this label. First poured 1970. <laughs> How apropos to my nails are like, I, I painted my nails like my favorite color that looks so nice and like in some sort of weird subconscious way, it's like matches Yankee Candle Blueberry. Yeah? Ah, oh, I love this candle. My parents don't burn that many Yankee Candles anymore. And so I don't think they're aware of the fact that like the new Yankee Candles are bad. This looks like it was poured in 2023. Yikes. But I'm going to try it because a couple people online have been saying that this one is fairly strong, at least for Yankee Candle Continuum. Um, but I brought one of these just for the fun of it. And there it is, my friends. That's the OG OG. This is like a 1999 pour, black band. Hmm. So sweet. Jasmine, such a sweetheart. She was in the Yankee Candle store. We were going through and we were talking about all the candles that we thought were like the best, you know? And we agreed on a lot of them. And then when she got to this, she was like, I say New England blueberry, not actual blueberry. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> And I was, I, I said, you know what? God bless. I'm like, since I'm like, now that I'm 42 and basically like an old woman, you know, I'm like retired and like about to die, you know, like a senior citizen. But <laughs> I, she was younger. I'm like, I'm an old lady. So like I was burning this candle in the nineties and I can tell you it is blueberry. New England blueberry is similar. It's very, very close, but not quite the same. And I just have such nostalgia for regular blueberry that like, I don't understand New England blueberry. And she was like, I totally get it. She was like, my, I bought New England blueberry for my grandmother and she said the same thing. She was like, it's not the same. It's not like blueberry. Give me blueberry. <laughs> and I was like, exactly. Me and your grandmother. See? Old ladies. Old ladies. <laughs> it has to be the real one. New England blueberry actually does smell very similar. It's just like weirdly, it's not as sweet. It's not as pronounced. But Jasmine said that it's actually sweeter upon being burned than regular blueberry, which I could see because the deepest elements here of blueberry that you don't get when you smell New England blueberry when you're smelling it is like this really deep, dark, jammy muskiness that like New England blueberry doesn't have. And when regular blueberry is burned, that does come out in, I mean, like it's like a, deep dark like almost masculine level kind of jamminess yeah it's very unique smell very unique and on cold kind of smells weird to be honest it kind of smells like a little bit plasticky or weird or artificial or like there's something in it but then once it's burned it's like this amazing intoxicating masculine musky blueberry but I could understand, like if you didn't grow up and you kind of don't 
get it. You know what I mean? New England blueberry has like the, the fragrance of blueberry, but it doesn't have that like deep masculine muskiness on the bottom. It's not bassy the way that the regular one is. It's like blueberry for like a new generation maybe. I'll take blueberry. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. Look for first sight. Tell me what you think. I know it's not performing. Wow. That's a yes. Like I said, it's a, I think it's a cross between Baccarat Rouge and In the Stars from Bath and Body Works. I don't know what kind of groom is going to want to smell like that, but it's really lovely. And I think so much more intriguing than that woman in white one. All right, my friends, I'll catch you in the next one. Let's do Kringle Serene Green coming up. I'll link everything that I can. First Light is not on the website right now currently, but it will be on Monday and it should be in most brick and mortar stores as well. 42 and 33 are available online. I'll link 42 and I think that's it. But if you don't get 42 now, don't worry. I think it's probably coming back even this year. I would say August. August, September, something like that. All right, my friends, I'll catch you in the next one.